Thank you, Terry. I appreciate that. Good morning, everyone. Please, please give me some energy. I, we need it. Good morning. All right. We are at our OWASP AppSec USA 2018. I am so excited to be here as an application security professional. Um, can't tell you uh, what an honor it is to be here in front of you today and to share this time with you. So again, good morning. It, this morning has gotten off to a very bumpy start. Uh, I don't know about all of you in the room, but we flew in last night. I brought my family with me. Um, my wife is originally from the Bay Area and we're coming from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And so I've got my six month old son who is my role model, my idol, but a six month old on a plane for five hours is rough. And then we've got a four and a half year old who is a lot to handle. So we got in late last night and I made a huge mistake this morning. Um, we decided to kind of stay north of here so that she could visit her family and I could come down and I forgot about 880 in the morning. So for me to be here today is huge. For you all to take time out of your day to come and sit and have this conversation with me means the world. I'm hopeful that um, the stuff I'm going to show you today um, at some really cool things we've done at Domino's uh, allows you to be able to go back to your respective organizations and if you're interested in solving the same types of problems uh, that this is helpful, f helpful to you. I'm going to try to move through this, this information as quickly as I can to, to allow for time for questions. And again, I hope this is something that you all really enjoy. Um, so uh, with that being said, my name is Mike Shepard. Um, I lead the application security program over at Domino's, and a lot of people, including myself, when I started at Domino's, are like, Domino's has an AppSec program? Like, why? So we do. I'm living proof of that. Uh, we actually have a really, in my mind, very impressive uh, development organization. We do a lot around innovation, and some of the stuff I'm going to show you really speaks to that. I like to always kind of start off my talks um, by just kind of getting something out of the way and forgive me I know it's early I've only had one cup of coffee but we just need to get we need to get over this this one thing I need to know just by show of hands how many folks came to this talk today hoping for Domino's pizza <laughs> just be honest please we always have a few I'm sorry at least the coupon, we'll work on it. <laughs> and that, I'm telling you, every time I'm I talk, I'm just like, let's just get it over with. Who came for pizza? Uh, we're working on it. A lot of the times when we try to plan to do that, it's the convention folks that are like, well, you're selling it for $7.99, so we're going to add $100 on to that. <laughs> that, that happened. Um, so again, what I want to talk about with you all today is a, a, a big problem um, that we had at Domino's. Um, and I've worked at a number of very large enterprises over the last 10 years leading AppSec programs. And from my experience, this has been a problem at many large enterprises. And it's really around um, security engagement. So as development teams, uh, our fine development professionals look to build really innovative, important software, how do they engage security right, in a really meaningful and valuable way? Um, and so at Domino's, this was a huge issue for us, right? Because if development teams don't engage security, there's potentially risks that's exposed to the business, right? Um, and so this was a problem that we had at Domino's. And really, honestly, this has been an issue uh, at every organization that I've worked at. The second part of my conversation, you guys are lucky, is um, I'm going to show you at the end of the day, uh, at Domino's, what we've done to really visualize security, right? Because it's important to do security, it's important to provide value in terms of from security, but, but what does the security posture of a development organization look like at the end of the day, right? So you understand what needs to be done to mitigate risk. And so, um, 
One of the things that we're known for at Domino's is that we're number one in pizza delivery. And I always think that's interesting that we say in pizza delivery, right? Because that means that somebody else might be number one in other things. But most of us in the room, just show of hands, how many of you have had Domino's? Very nice. Our CEO would be very happy to see that. We have this saying at Domino's. How many enjoyed the Domino's experience? OK, not bad. You guys will remember, I'm going to use some, some terminology here, please. I hope no one's offended. I, got, I get in trouble a lot at work. I actually got in trouble the day before coming here. Um, and I'm starting to kind of realize sometimes you have to get in trouble to do a good job, right? Um, so my CISO said, Mike, you're going to do this last talk, and you have to promise me you're not going to. He was serious. He said, uh, you're not going to say anything bad about Domino's, right? And I said, no. I'm not going to do that. I don't know why they think I would. But we have this saying at Domino's, like, oh, yes, we did, right? Because we like to do really cool things around innovation. And so when you look at Domino's, Domino's, when I came into Domino's, there's this kind of this thought around, we're not a pizza company. We're a technology company that sells pizza products, right? And when you look at a lot of the innovations, the things that we've done with technology, that is true. Uh, most of you have seen Pizza Tracker if you've ordered pizza. Like, I'm extremely dependent on that, right? Like, we ordered pizza from another company last night. We do order from other companies at times, and the pizza never showed up. And I was anxious and nervous, like, you know, where's the pizza at? So Pizza Tracker solves that problem for us. You guys have probably recently seen we do we're, we're toying with the idea of, of self-driving delivery, right? Autonomous vehicles, partner with Ford. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'm not. I'm just being honest. You know, the car just shows up, and the, you put your code in, and you're looking around, and your pizza's there. Um, but that's the future <laughs> of pizza delivery. You can text. You can do Alexa. There's all these really cool cutting-edge ways to order pizza, right? And so that's Domino's. Um, we have over 14,000 stores worldwide. That number is growing every day. We are in uh, over 85 international markets. And again, that number increases every day. And lastly, this is uh, one of the reasons I, I wanted to put this on this slide is this is an astounding fact. Domino's generates or derives almost $6 billion of its annual revenue through digital means. So people are engaging and buying from Domino's digitally to a tune of $6 billion a year. And so when you think about that, there's a heavy reliance on development, right, to do that. It's, it's really very impressive. So when I say I get in trouble, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, so we had this huge critical problem at Domino's. Development teams were building these cutting edge innovations but we're not incorporating and working with security teams to identify risk, provide security requirements, and really build secure software, right? So that's a recipe for, for disaster in terms of a breach, compromise, these types of things. And so we had a problem. Our problem was essentially that our security engagement process sucked. Okay, I kind of said it that way. I got in trouble for saying that. Um, but it's true, it sucked. And so in the late 90s, early 2000s, you guys will remember Domino's kind of changed their business because they came out. We have this tenant where it, it's based around uncommon honesty, like our pizza really sucks and you probably shouldn't eat it. And so Domino's said that, right? Like, does anybody remember when they came out with those ads? Like, before you, we run this commercial, our pizza sucks and the sauce does and the, and the, and the dough. But so they, uncommon honesty, they admitted that, and we changed it, right? And today we have a pretty good product. Like, I like Domino's Pizza. So, so our problem was that our, our security engagement process sucked. Development teams didn't engage us. Uh, we didn't have visibility. They didn't know who to engage. They didn't know why to engage us. They didn't understand the value, so they just didn't engage us, and they're building things with a lot of vulnerabilities in it, and they're, they're promoting this stuff to production, and now Domino's has all this risk. And so because our engagement uh, process sucked, very few teams wanted to engage us. 
I gave a talk at Atlassian around this problem, and, and my handler at Atlassian, he said, you know what, you guys' security engagement process kind of reminded me of this, this, this uh, quote from the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. How many of you folks are familiar with that book? I, that's the other thing. I, I get to these talks, and people are like, yeah, we've heard of that. I've, I've never heard of the book. I, I promise, folks, I will read the book. <laughs> but the quote, I saw the quote, and I said, that sounds like our engagement process. So this is kind of a summary of what our security engagement process was like. And I'll read it. So they wouldn't even lift a finger to save their own grandmothers from the ravenous bug blotter beast of trawl without orders signed in triplicate, sent in, sent back, queried, lost, found, subjugated to public inquiry, lost again, and finally buried in soft peat for three months and recycled as fire lighters. I would not want to mess with that, right? Like I'm not, if that's their process, I'm not a part of that. And so that's what our process was like. It was just this really dysfunctional, uh, inefficient, ineffective thing that made no sense. And so development teams stayed away from it, right? And so when I came into Domino's, this is one of the very first things I identified as a gap and said, we need to change that. We need to solve for it. And again, this is a problem I've seen across most major enterprises. So just to quickly summarize, our previous security engagement process was broken. Um, it was very manual. Uh, it was very in inefficient. It, there were meetings and more meetings and some more meetings. And if you want to meet again, we can meet again. Right? Does that sound like anybody's life? Like, you want to meet again, we can meet at lunch. And you're like, for <laughs> um, So oftentimes in my career, people would want to meet. We had just hours, hundreds of hours wasted with people talking and really no action. There was no alignment and no visibility. People didn't know how to consume security uh, services for the benefit of the company. Today, by introducing this solution that I'm going to showcase for you guys, our new security engagement solution, we now have something that's integrated, it's streamlined, it's automated, and it, and it allows you to monitor it, which is really the power, is, is to look at the, the outcome, the results. And so this thing that we were able to build was actually uh, through leveraging uh, Atlassian's Confluence product, uh, which is a, a wiki type of tool similar to SharePoint. Uh, a lot of the early development at Domino's happens around Confluence when they're looking to uh, develop and document requirements, workflows, these types of things. Um, leveraging JIRA, which is our primary um, uh, bug uh, defect tracker, and then lastly Splunk and Splunk's ITSI uh, product, which allows us to uh, produce a KPI metrics dashboard to visualize the security posture of our development organization. And so how did we do this? Well, I didn't see this, but we hopefully that process is supposed to be able to write. So, so I said something negative, like our security engagement process sucked, right? You would never tell your kid they suck. Some people do. Um, <laughs> those sports guys, you just, you suck. You got to get better. Um, so how did we unsuck our security process? One of the things I've learned over my career is like a lot of times in security, we build security things with the right intentions, but we build them the way we want to build them, where we want to build them, and then we go back to the development organization and say, you guys have to come over here and use this security thing, right? And so what we've proven and what I've seen over my career is that that does not work, right? And so my approach and our approach at Domino's was to build on top of the existing development where they live, do things, build this, this process uh, in alignment with their existing process, right? And so the very first thing we did is identify where do our developers live? Where do they work? Well, at Domino's, they work at Con on Confluence and JIRA. And so that's where we built uh, the first part of this solution, the risk form piece. It's an actual form that's built on Confluence, and it really asks eight critical security questions to development teams. Hey, is this thing that you're building, this API, um, this web application, is it web-facing? Does it handle sensitive data? 
Does it talk to a database? Is it under any type of regulatory oversight, PCI, these types of things? And by taking in that data, uh, we were able on the back end to build a, a risk handler that automatically logics this data from a risk perspective, then creates security requirement tickets and assigns them out to service providers. So we created the form on Confluence uh, using Adaptivist Forms for Confluence. We asked the eight critical security questions that we thought were most important to understand. Uh, we partnered with uh, a company, uh, an Atlassian partner, to build this risk handler on, uh, on uh, JIRA. I'll show you in just a minute, and it does the risk decisioning. Um, it creates tickets and assigns them out to uh, the uh, service providers. And then lastly, we were able to, to take all that rich data, right, from folks filling out this, this risk form, getting back these security requirement tickets, we're able to take all that data now and visualize it in Splunk. And I'll show you that in just a minute. I'm sorry this slide is... This form looks like. It's very blurry on here, and I don't know why, but uh, essentially this form is created on Confluence. The very first thing that it does is it populates with your, your AD credentials. It knows who you are. You're the reporter. And so what you're going to do is you're going to provide the application or service name for the building. Under that, you're going to provide the JIRA project key that this development is, it belongs to. Uh, after that, there are, that's a question over to the left. Hey, is this thing that you're building web-facing? Yes or no? Um, does it fall under any type of regulatory oversight? Example, PCI. Uh, does, it, does it utilize any risky or sensitive HTTP methods, such as post, put, or delete? Yes. One of the things that we found um, from building this risk form is it actually became an opportunity to provide awareness training to our project managers, to our development leads, to our developers, because as they were filling the form out, it intuitively kind of spoke to them and said, hey, I'm answering yes to a lot of these bad things, this thing that I'm building is kind of risky. I do need security. And so we actually started to get that input from our development folks. And I thought that was helpful. And so you'll answer more questions. Hey, are you sending data out to third parties? Um, lastly, you get an area to provide a confluence link um, where we can go and learn more about this particular development. And then lastly, special notes. I always thought special notes was interesting because it shows you a lot about people, like, we've had people go into special notes and say some weird things, right? Like, Mike, trust me, you want to pen test this thing. Um, and I'm like, okay, FYI, Mike, I think the form is really cool. Uh, and in a, an area for business logic, people are very interesting, you know? So, <laughs> so there are two ways that the, the, the application that we built on JIRA works, right? Over to the left, there, there is a weighting. There's a, a score that's specifically tied to a question, right? So like, is it public facing? Um, yes. Then there's a, a score of five there. It's, it's, a, it's a heavier weight, right? And so there is a security requirement ticket that may be um, created specifically tied to a specific question. Uh, the other type of security requirement ticket and the way in which it's, it's generated is a, 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 a total security score, right? So as you fill out, or as you answer these eight questions, there's a total score that's taken, and based off of that total score, you fall within a risk range from low to critical. And based off of where you fall, there are, um, by default, a certain number of security tickets that may be created and assigned out, right? Uh, and an example would be secure coding, uh, secure coding guidelines ticket. One of the cool things that is a, an output of the form is a receipt. Because think about it, when you engage, there's no record, right? When you talk to a development team, you just go in a room, you meet, you know, they ask you questions, you give them answers. And at the end of the day, there's no receipt, right? And so one of the things that we did is say, okay, as a record over time, we want to take and provide you kind of an output of what you told us about your development, right? So if you tell us lies or you misrepresent things, in the future, if there's an issue, we can hold you accountable, right? I'm not saying you have to hold developers accountable, but 
this, you know, have to. Um, so this is what an actual um, security requirements ticket looks like for a web app pen test today. And we're colorizing this thing so that everything doesn't bleed in, in, into one another. But what this ticket does is it says, hey, application pen test ticket, this is what's required, this is who's responsible for what, and what's really cool, now most of you folks in here I'm assuming are security folks, so I'm gonna have to change what I say to developers. Um, but the security people didn't really like the SLA piece, right? Um, because rarely have we had SLAs to deliver services. It's always been the other way around, where development teams do. But now because of our form, we have three business days to respond back to the folks that have uh, folks that this ticket. Three business days. You have to reach out, engage, and say, hey, you need a pen test. I need to sit with you and understand what you're doing uh, to determine whether or not test. The InfoSec folks pulled me in a room and said, man, you're not cool. I said, guys, I said, this is good for us. We can show value. And they're like, Mike, no one smiled. They're like, this is not funny. Um, so they, they've, they've gotten used to it. Uh, it's funny when I asked them, I said, uh, well, what do you guys think is an acceptable turnaround for SLA, right? They got quiet. It's crickets. We don't need SLAs, Mike. So we have an SLA to respond back. And, and guess what? The development organization loves this. And so does security, right? Because it provides parameters around the engagement process. I'm almost done. Uh, I'm going to show you this dashboard. I think the dashboard is really the coolest thing. So as a result, of this, this engagement automation, like what's been, wow, my numbers are gone. Okay, no they're not, no they're not. I saw the zeros, I was like, this is really one of those days. How do I, okay, so I had nothing as an outcome. <laughs> um, so right, the data speaks for itself. And I think most of you in the room that are security folks, most of you that care about secure software development, most of you that care about value derived from security to development, this is kind of where the rubber hits the road, right? So as a result of having this solution in place for 18 months, we've had over 400 submissions to our form. And for me, this is very powerful, right? right? It's like when your child is born and having a child, it's you see the child, you know the child, you love the child. This is real. So prior to this form, we didn't have this data, right? We didn't know that we were engaging folks, you know, 400 times, right? And so we know today, uh, over the last 18 months, we've had 400 submissions into our risk form. So we've had the opportunity to mitigate risk 400 times. That's amazing. We've had over 2,000 tickets created as a result of this form. We've had 800 engagements open. And so what that means is just because you get a security requirement ticket does not necessarily mean that there will be an engagement. The service provider may you know, say, hey, you're, you're good, you don't need a pen test. We've had over 600 engagements closed. Think about that. Think about all that risk that's been mitigated. We've had 4,000 requirements met from pen tests, to security engagement, I forgot what that meant. He holds up the thing, is it 10 minutes? I'm almost done, I gotta speed through it. Um, he's like, you, you're, talk, you're talking too much. Um, 4,000 security requirements met, and then lastly, um, you know, this is a rea reality, all security requirements don't always get met. So we've got 320 open and outstanding security requirements. One of the things we've learned is that requirements sometimes stay open because folks don't have money for a pen test. Folks don't believe that requirement needs to be met. So there's a reason for requirements not being met. As a result of this thing, and I'll move to the dashboard, as a result of this exercise and this new automated process, we now have something that's standardized, easy, and fast. Right? That's good security. Those security guys, they have something that's standard, it's easy, and guess what? It's fast. I had a, a project manager say, man, I, I, I used that form and it only took a couple of minutes. I said, yeah, man. He said, he, I, he kept staring at me. I was like, what do you want? Like, <laughs> you want something more? He's like, no, I just think it's so cool. So security is cool. As a result of this, this, this automation, 
Um, we've had other internal business teams say, hey, we could use that, that you built to solve problems um, for our business units. Uh, at Domino's Finance Ecom, our project management office, our site reliability engineer folks, and our SOC have all taken this solution and utilized it to solve problems specific to their use cases. So now what do we do, right? We're security people. We, we get nervous when there's nothing to do. I don't, I like to do nothing, right? So now what do we do? We've, we've built this thing, you know, it's streamlined and, and automated. So now what? Now it's time to monitor it, right? What's happening over the, the next 18 months? Let's understand the data. And so what we've done at Domino's is we've taken Splunk's ITSI, right? And a security person for over 10 years now, we've come so far in terms of controls and capabilities, really across the development life cycle. Now it's time to visualize the security posture of the development organization, right? Across seven really critical KPIs. And so what we have now at Domino's is I can go to our e-commerce development leader, leaders, and I can say, hey, right now you guys have a composite security score for the e-com development. E-com at Domino's is your dominoes.com, right? And then all of the underlying microservices, maybe 300 of them, that make up your dominoes.com experience. And so for all of those services and that front end, for development, you have a score of a 35, which is low. It's super red. It's critical, okay? And that's zero to 100. And so, well, why, is, why, why do we have a 35? Why is it red? What needs to be fixed? And so when you look to the right, and you guys can't see it, and I'm sorry for that, that very first KPI, that 85%, is scan coverage, both static and dynamic, across all services, okay? And so your score is predicated on your scan coverage. If we're scanning everything, that's good. Your next KPI is met security requirements. We're changing that or have changed that to security compliance. Out of the number of security requirements tickets that you have open, how many are being closed over a period of time across what number of services or applications? To the right from there, you have, and in this instance, this example looks pretty good. Next you have, um, uh, this is my favorite one, open vulnerabilities, on average, high and critical across all of your development. And this number would say you've got 4.5 high and critical open and outstanding vulnerabilities over, I think, 30 days. We all know in this room that's unacceptable. Development folks don't. You have to tell them that's not good. Um, the next one is we have a tool that runs in our IDE called Secure Assist. Some of you may be familiar with Secure Assist. It's alerting our developers in real time uh, to bad things that they may introduce into a code base. And so on average, this is saying you have three on average, um, open, uh, high, and critical vulnerabilities that developers are being alerted to that they're not resolving while developing. That's not good. Next to that, you have mean time to resolution. On average, and these numbers are examples, let me make that disclaimer. My CISO said, Mike, the, the sample data. Um, so on average, it takes 90 days to fix a vulnerability in our code base. The next one is a WAF correlation KPI. The vulnerabilities we have in our code base that we know about versus the malicious traffic that we see for a service trying to exploit that vulnerability. And this actually shows you a static number. Lastly, and we all know this is a huge problem around development, is uh, risk to third party and open source libraries. So on average, we've got 46 uh, open, critical, and high vulnerabilities across our open, our third party and, and open source libraries. These folks now have the ability on their own to understand where they need to go to mitigate risk, right? And how they need to do it and where resources need to go. The dashboard, those KPIs drill down into actual services across your development. Uh, repo, so you understand maybe not every service is a problem. Some in particular have more issues than others. And then from there, and I love this because developers, their mouths are just wide open. We can drill down to the actual tickets if you want to talk about it. And they say, no, Mike, that's enough. That's enough, Mike, calm down. You can look at your services holistically and their related security score. 
And lastly, you can look at an actual service across the SDLC um, and all of the different KPIs, down to tickets. We've saved over three. Um, by automation, saved almost five. Um, folks are not wasting time anymore. We're reduced of this automation. Look to automate when you can, empower each other, pick good partners in life too, and monitor and show your metrics. Thank you. You guys already know security is everyone's job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've got a couple of minutes for questions. I'm sorry I took so long. It's Thank you guys so much for coming out. Any questions at all? Anybody going to go home and try to implement this at their job? There's always going to be some percentage of, hey, we can argue about that. What you can't, huh? So the question is, is the age old thing of, well, you say the data says this and it's negative. We say the data is not that negative, OK? The tickets tell the story. So the reason we wanted to have the ability to drill down to the tickets is so we don't have that discussion anymore. At Domino's, when they see you're able to drill down from a KPI to a ticket and that ticket's been validated, the data in there, it's not a discussion. There's always going to be this variance in tolerance, right, around the thresholding of a KPI. But at the end of the day, we care about the actual ticket that's predicating this negative perspective. Great question. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry we don't have so much time. Yes? I'm sorry? That's a great question. I always tell them as soon as you have enough data to answer these questions is the best time, right around or soon after requirements. So my thing is always from requirements to development, somewhere's in there. Um, as you start coding, it's probably too late. Right before coding should be an appropriate time to go into this form. But I, I, don't, I don't like to put restrictions around when they can fill the form out. If, if Soon after requirements are understood, you understand what the answers are to these questions, fill the form out. So it may be requirements, it may be design, but no later than development. It's a great question. Let me get somebody on this side. I'm sorry. It's an age old question, right? How do we police development? So that's why the dashboard is so important, right? So. If you guys are filling out the form, you're getting good requirements, you're doing scanning, you're fixing things, well, why, does, why are your KPIs all super red and critical, right? So something's wrong. So then you start to kind of investigate and say, well, who's not filling the form out? And you get a few folks that say, I didn't know we were supposed to fill the form out. <laughs> so that's why the dashboard is so important, is because at the end of the day, you have enough data to kind of to display the overall picture. And so by looking at the data, you can say, well, something's not right. OK? Good question. Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. So today we have kind of like these eight standard tickets. Uh, tickets. Um, you have a security architecture review where you're able to capture a lot and provide functional and non-functional security requirements back. You have a pen test ticket. You have uh, secure coding guidelines. Uh, you have a compliance review for compliance-related issues. You have uh, a risk assessment, potentially. So there are some eight tickets that can possibly be created and assigned out that will lead to potentially more tickets. Yes. Yeah. Great questions. Uh, one more. Our, our CIO said if you don't fill this form out, you're fired. We did. What? But guess what? 
working with the development organization. Bottom line, we have to work with the development organization from day one as collaborators, right? You have to have input into this thing that you own. And so that relationship has worked well for us. I got to say hi to my friend, my good friend, Jim Manico over here. This is our guy right here. You know, I got to say this last thing, and I'll shut up, because Carrie's like, you got to get off the stage. Um, last year, you know, I, was a, I wanted to, we love OWASP, right? AppSec folks, OWASP. And so last year, I couldn't make it, because I chose another conference. Long story. But uh, it, it's such an honor and a privilege to now this year be up here to be able to speak and show you guys what we've done. So thank you so much. Enjoy the conference, everyone.